Professor Walter Williams, how much political progress have blacks made in America since the death of Dr. Martin Luther King? Well, in terms of elective offices, there's been significant uh, political power, I mean, uh, political progress. But uh, very often, more often than not, that uh, political power has not been translated into the things that blacks need, like better schools, uh, uh, more safer communities. You know, some of the cities uh, in our country whose mayors and city councilmen are predominantly black, they're some of our cities with the major problems. Now, I personally don't think that political power uh, in and of itself is a solution to the problems. Professor Ronald Walters, same question. How much progress? Well, I think we've made a lot of progress. Uh, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 was sort of a first stage and with that, um, we started out uh, 1,000 black elected officials. We now have about 6,651. Uh, so we've got a, a large number of black elected officials, uh, mayors of many large cities and so forth. I think the challenge now is to uh, try to leverage political power and economic power. And I think uh, to that extent, I would agree with uh, Mr. Williams. That we, that's our next frontier. Professor, we're, I remember being told in school the way you get something done is to get people elected and then you get the voting power and then you accomplish these things. Why hasn't that happened? <clears throat> well, uh, I don't buy that hypothesis. <clears throat> that is, uh, if you look at uh, Japanese Americans who almost by any socioeconomic measure of socioeconomic success, they stand at the top of the pile in America. Uh, Japanese, uh, they don't even have political power in areas where they're the most numerous, such as San Francisco. Um, or you find Jews in American, America. Uh, uh, Jews, uh, before they established themselves as political contenders, strong political contend contenders, they had a lot of economic power. Now, on the other hand, if you look at some of the white ethnics, namely the Irish, the Irish uh, established themselves politically uh, in many of our cities. They ran the machines, but the Irish were the slowest rising among the ethnic groups. So I don't buy the proposition that in order to get economic power, <coughs> A first order condition is to get uh, political power. Uh, it may be the reverse. So let's talk about economic progress. Professor? <clears throat> well, I think the uh, economic progress of blacks has been uh, phenomenal. I, I would say progress in general among blacks. Uh, I think blacks are the only oppressed people in history that have accomplished uh, so much over some of the highest battle uh, barriers in such a short period of time. Uh, and that is, uh, uh, if you could resurrect uh, uh, ex-slaves, I mean slaves, <coughs> they would find that their grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, granddaughters are mayors of the world's largest cities. If you considered, uh, if you looked at black income each year and you added it up and just considered black people as a nation, black people would be the ninth richest nation on the face of the earth. On the face of the earth. Which is not saying that there are many, many problems that remain, but black people have made phenomenal progress. No question. Economic. Yes, no question about it. Uh, when you look at, for example, even the harshest period uh, of our subjugation in this country at the turn of the century, it was also the fastest period of black capital formation. Uh, so from a people who uh, W.E.B. Du Bois said a long time ago came into uh, their citizenship naked and penniless, uh, what we have today is a people who um, have pretty much by their own, the dent of their own sweat, uh, have achieved a tremendous um, status in this country. Slavery and discrimination in America, that is history. Uh, nothing can be done about it. And I believe in that sense he's right that we need not focus all of our energies on it. Moreover, uh, I would argue that the discrimination, the problems that black people face uh, today, uh, for the most part have very, very little to do with the heritage of slavery, with the heritage of uh, uh, discrimination in our country. Uh, you know, in 1925 in Harlem, 85% uh, of black kids live in two-parent families. Today in Harlem, maybe you'll find 30% if you're lucky. Uh, now, this great change can't be attributed to slavery. It can't be attributed to racial discrimination. Uh, and that is, I, I think that too much of our focus is on discrimination and the heritage of slavery as opposed to how are we going to cope with the immediate problems that we face in our communities today. From San Diego, California. Go right ahead. Um, I'd like to say something that, you know, I'm a white person and I've about had it up to my earlobes with the slavery issue. I mean, 
my great great granddad wasn't around when slavery was going on, I believe if in order for people to get together and organize themselves as a functioning unit, why don't they quit talking about the slavery? I mean, that goes back to Abraham Lincoln. We're almost beyond Ronald Reagan. We're entering the year 2000. Are they going to continue to use the slavery issue forever? The Africans themselves were the first ones who initiated slavery. The white Europeans couldn't have got slaves unless the blacks were complicit in this effort. I think it's just an atrocity to keep using the slavery thing. And I've seen the blacks from Martin Luther King up until today go downhill. I mean, if they don't think they've gone downhill, look what's going on in L.A. with the gang shootings. And the one gentleman said, if they want to make education better for blacks, we'll give them to better neighborhoods. Well, they're living in black neighborhoods. Why don't they straighten up the blacks in the neighborhoods? Do they want to move to a white neighborhood where it's safe, or do they want to move to a better black neighborhood? Also, why doesn't Bill Cosby, Michael Jackson, Flip Wilson, Mr. T, all these super black studs with all the money, go into the neighborhoods and donate a lot of money to help their black brothers? They don't because they want to be an oil cookie and they want to get white. Thank you, Carl. Let me, let me just jump in here, <laughs> Professor. Well, uh, outside of the uh, volume of racism uh, in those remarks, uh, I think that uh, I understand, I think, uh, the frustration of people uh, who've heard a lot about slavery and uh, who feel, I think, uh, the tremendous guilt associated with it. Uh, it is a particular American crime, uh, and I think we have yet to deal with it as a people. Um, the Holocaust, of course, was something which was also an historical crime. It was something that somebody else did over there. Slavery was something that somebody did right here. And so it is an abiding part of the American scene. Like it or not, uh, the condition of black people in America can be traced back to many of those things that were done. And so it's logical for us to raise it. Uh, we should not use it as, a, as an excuse all the time. And so I think to that extent, what we're talking about is history and we're trying to make some sense out of the condition that black people face today. Let me respond also sure. to the caller's call, that is, <clears throat> Uh, slavery and discrimination in America, that is history. Uh, nothing can be done about it. And I believe in that sense he's right that we need not focus all of our energies on it. Moreover, uh, I would argue that the discrimination, the problems that black people face uh, today, uh, for the most part have very, very little to do with the heritage of slavery, with the heritage of uh, uh, discrimination in our country. Uh, you know, in 1925 in Harlem, 85% uh, of black kids live in two-parent families. Today in Harlem, maybe you'll find 30% if you're lucky. Uh, now, this great change can't be attributed to slavery. It can't be attributed to racial discrimination. Uh, and that is, I, I think that too much of our focus is on discrimination and the heritage of slavery as opposed to how are we going to cope with the immediate problems that we face in our communities today. Well, that, that is an incredible remark uh, because if uh, at one time in the history of this country, uh, blacks had ever been equal and then gone downhill. I think we could make the argument that slavery would have had nothing to do with it. But what we have faced historically is a situation where we have never had the resources to catch up because of slavery. We have never had um, an equal status in mm -hmm. any measure that you can mm -hmm. formulate uh, because <coughs> of that condition, because we started late and we were kept back late. No, but so I don't understand, I really don't understand how an, an academic can sit here and say no, that what slavery I had nothing to do with it today. Okay, no, no, what I'm saying, no, what I'm saying is that so far this year in Washington, D.C., uh, 70 blacks have been killed. 8,000, right. eight, wait, 8,000 will be I murdered think, this year, more right. than, in, than the entire I Vietnam War. Right. Now, what I want to know is how can that be explained by that slavery? Is, that is far different. That That's particular cause is far different than saying that we can blame everything on slavery. I don't think anybody, any responsible academic mm -hmm. who uses slavery as a basis can blame everything on it. But I'd be interested to find out what we can blame on slavery.